Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Brewing with Jim. This is the show where we take your questions and we give them to Jim Brewington, our resident expert our, in, in, in all things ministry, the Bible. Yes. No. <laughs> Guru and everything. Exactly. Watch as the honey of heaven drips from my lips. Yeah, professional <laughs> athlete, uh-huh. Formula One driver. Uh, no. <laughs> no. 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 Um, no, you are a man of multi talents. I have a couple, I guess. Yeah. Mediocre. Name, name, name one. A talent? Yeah. Uh, are you serious? A serious <laughs> sure. talent? Why not? Um, I can interpret uh, from English to ASL and reverse uh, for several hours. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that uh, on international wow. television. I've done that with yeah. big audiences. Did wow. that? You remember when Ross Perot was running for president? You, you, you I wasn't. Don't. I wasn't born yet. You don't. Yeah, it's like cute. <laughs> but being a history major, I'm aware of. You're aware of the situation. Yeah. When he was in Orange County, I was his interpreter. Wow. We always took two. Yeah. You know, in case one of us croaks. Sure. But, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Are I'm. Ha- we, I'm happy that you didn't. Are we? I don't want to do my talents. I don't really. No. Have no. That. No. This is. Yeah. We're almost getting it in reverse. We're doing the blindside gym segment first. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no. don't do that. Um, what, just out of curiosity, you mentioned this, but uh, what is the longest consecutive amount of time that you had to interpret? Was it hours? Was it like... It was my mistake uh, because... No, it was. <laughs> Did they ask was, you to stop and you kept going? <laughs> no, I interpreted for a deaf guy who went to on a men's retreat, and I interpreted for 15 hours... Straight? Uh, including, yes, <gasps> uh, including meals uh, with his friends wow. and so forth. That is ill-advised. That um, I had to lie down because it, it does something to your head and everything spins. Holy cow. Our error, in, uh, our error rate increases as an interpreter after 20 minutes. And so we take two interpreters and we spell back and forth. 20 minutes. Yeah, but that's not practical a lot of the time. Sure, sure, sure. So... Uh, I can go a couple of hours. Without, that's amazing. Not a problem. So that's that's a fascinating tangent. Let's jump to, of course, to our question. This is do. why we're here. This show is all about taking your questions uh, as an audience and giving them to Jim to, uh, as we like to say, mine the wit and wisdom oh of of gosh. this man. Yeah, <laughs> half wit. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, Hopefully it's not half wisdom as well. No. Um, Our question today uh, comes, I believe, maybe you know, but from a student, is this, maybe I'm just... I don't know where most of these come from. I'm just assuming that that's the case based on the question. I don't know. They're they're submitted anonymously, uh, which is part of the attraction, I think. Part of the fun, yeah. Yeah. So the question today, I mean, just like I said, sounds like based on the question must have come from a student, which is very believable. Uh, Here's our question for this morning, and I think we could both talk about this from our experience in education and being educated as well. Um, (laughs) What is, (laughs) I didn't mean for that to sound so condescending. I just mean the fact that we went through school. (laughs) (laughs) We're so educated. No, I mean like I went through. We're schooled. You know, grade school. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, uh, the question for the day is, what is your best method of studying or what is the best method of studying in school? And a way to take a rid of, I know you hate best and most questions. But. (laughs) <laughs> just to, to, to iron this out well, a little bit, maybe the question is just what are your recommended study tips? First of all, um, I think it's not one method because it, uh, people learn in different ways. Absolutely. And because uh, people who know what they're talking about in the study of education, and I'm not one of them, I'm all experience. And, uh, yeah, you're just a teacher. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a teacher for, for decades. Um, people who know what they're talking about say... There are people who are visual learners, yep. and I guess that means by watching a video or by uh, watching somebody do something, and mm-hmm. then you can do as they do, copy them, visual learners. Uh, there are tactile learners, mm-hmm. who people who have to have hands-on, and they try something, uh, and that includes writing, by the way. Sure. So writing notes is part of tactile learning. Uh, and while I'm thinking about that, 
punching a keyboard on a computer is not tactile learning. Mm -mm. Writing is, writing with a pencil, writing with a pen on paper. Uh, so there are people who learn best that way. And then there are audible learners, um, people who learn by listening to an explanation, yeah. uh, lectures, discussions. Uh, and I don't know if there are <clears throat> uh, other methods of learning. These, I think, overlap. I think everybody yeah. has a little bit of visual, a little bit of tactile, a little bit of audible. But determine which one is predominant in your life. You are the student. You are going to study. Uh, know which one you are and then tune into a method of study that uh, is compatible yeah. with the way that, that you learn. I think that uh, no matter what method you use, studying with another person yep. is one of the best tips I can give. Yeah, I had... Uh, study buddies, mostly my friends, but uh, who were in college, and we would study together. We'd go to the library. You know what a library is. You've heard of those. <laughs> uh, I wasn't born yet. No, no. I'm <laughs> Well, some of my students don't know. Yeah, They've yeah. never been in one. Uh, but Much like Ross Perot, it's a it's, thing. Oh, no. <laughs> my gosh. Uh, I have so many funny stories about interpreting for him, but that's way off <laughs> that's base. A, yes. That can be a blindside gym question in know the future. What, um, or skip it. Um, <laughs> know what type of learning uh, learner you are. Yes. And then study that way with another person who might be of the same kind of learning. Uh, if you interact with another person, it becomes more vivid. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was in at Texas Tech University, we had to have a minor, and so I chose English because I thought that was really sure. easy. I took a summer course in uh, Greek studies, and not the Greek language, but the classics, Euripides and all those dudes. Yeah. I think they're not living now. And Probably not. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and don't take summer courses, by the way. They're all condensed, especially if they're difficult. <laughs> sure. I, sure. It's, it's more faster. Uh, it's more information faster. Sure. Some, okay. More of a fire hose. <clears throat> I was so sleepy and so tired because I worked full time, too, mm -hmm. that my friend and I would study these things uh, together. We had to read uh, about all that stuff. And to keep ourselves awake, we put cold washcloths on our face. Oh, goodness. So that we could just shake our heads and get back into this. Learn how to learn how to learn for you. And then do that, uh, I, I guess you could call it a temp, with a study buddy. And then repeat. And then yeah. repeat. And then repeat mm -hmm. over and over. Sure. Uh, the repetition, I think, is very important. Yeah. Now, there are two reasons to study, probably. One is for learning and one is for grades. Mm. Why are you studying? Are you studying to get this class checked off? Sure. And uh, you need to make a good grade? Or, <clears throat> excuse me, or are you studying for learning? Mm -hmm. uh, and two different approaches. Sure. I would suggest that people study for learning. Yes. Because very the grades much. are a byproduct of what you have learned. Yeah. But uh, I have students who admit they study just for the grades. I have to get the grades. Yeah, that's not, yeah, that's grade, not rare. Grade. Yeah, that's yeah, not it's surprising. Not, it's not rare. Remember that being a student is a profession. Mm -hmm. It's what you do. It's your career right yeah. now when you're in school. Um, the pay is terrible. It's <laughs> the benefits are to die for. Sure. You get uh, free insurance. You get free housing. You get free uh, walking around money, free food, free clothes, free uh, – what else do you get for free? Free insurance, free uh, – As a student? Yeah. All this comes from your parents. Well, it, for, most, for most kids. For most kids, yeah. not all. Sure. But – Think of it as a profession. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a job with those kind of perks. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah. We don't. Uh, That's right. We have some perks, yeah. But mm -hmm. view your learning as this is what I am doing professionally right sure. now. This is the way I'm approaching it. I get out of bed in the morning and go to school to learn. 
Mm -hmm. I wish that would get inside some of the students who get out of the bed in the morning, get out of the bed in the morning, and come to school to be with friends or to have mm -hmm. a good time. Sure. Uh, and extracurricular activities, uh, I'm for those. Those are good. But that's not the predominant reason you're coming to school. Right. You're coming to school to, to learn. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are... Uh, interested in grades, and who isn't? I mean, that's okay. That's not a terrible thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's a terrible way to uh, be motivated to, to learn. Yeah. But uh, learn how to, the kind of learning that you do that I mentioned already, and then, um, and then come to uh, a realization that the grades are going to be important. I wish it weren't so, but when somebody uh, learns, uh, well, when somebody asks how you're doing in school, your parents ask you how you're doing in school, well, I have uh, three A's, a B, and yeah, a C. Yeah, it comes down to grades. That, it yeah. comes down to grades, and the parents think that way too. Sure. Because they were raised that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you have to kind of think about the grades, yes. Uh, the teacher's job, though, is not really to grade you. The teacher's job is to evaluate you. And What's the difference? The di <laughs> <laughs> I had a student. There are many uh, teachers that would, that would disagree with that or not know the difference. Well, I think the teachers are um, a product of having, be, having to be grade-focused. Sure. There's no question about that. But I had a student in another high school where I taught uh, and before he can't, you will never know his name and you will never be able to identify who he is. Sure, sure. Uh, but he came to school and his dad talked to me, uh, I think the first day or before the first day. And he said, he has trouble learning. We're just trying to get him through high school. Mm -hmm. And he was taking an American Sign Language class. His dad, and, he, and the kid played football. Mm -hmm. His dad had been a professional football player. Okay. And he said, we're not here for the football. We're here for him to learn and to graduate. But just know that stay in touch with me, and we will try to get him through high school. That's what we want to do. Yeah. And I'm sure he won't have any schooling after high school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. This guy comes to class, and I could tell instantly he has no aptitude for learning uh, ASL. He is, uh, but he tries, mm -hmm. he sits there, he watches, he practices. I had a lab on Wednesday mornings for students who wanted to come in and practice with each other. Yeah. He was always there. Good for him. He would come up to me and say, I'm having trouble w learning this. Can you help me? I decided in January that I'm going to pass this guy. Mm -hmm. I don't care what his grade is. Sure. I mean, who gets blessed if sure. I fail him? That, right, right, right. You know, and that's going by grades. And I told his dad in early spring, January or February, I have decided that he's going to pass because he tries so hard. And I wish every student tried as hard as he does. Yeah. Came down to the final, and he got a, a D on the final. And I plugged in mathematically his grades, and mm -hmm. he passed the course with a D. But there he passed go. the course. There you go. I didn't have to do any manipulation, which I would have done. Sure. I do that. I have a category of grades uh, in in my classes called P and P grades. It's passion and perseverance. And mm -hmm. I, I want to see how passionate you are about learning, mm -hmm. and I want to see uh, how you persevere. To do that, do you bring your book to class? Do you bring the stuff sure. to class you're supposed to? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that P and P grade is wiggle room for me mm -hmm. to post uh, the grades that I have evaluated the student should receive. Mm -hmm. All right, he passed. Um, his class participation was part of that yeah. too. Do you give class participation? I do not. Grace? Okay. No. Some do. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If you have written papers that you have to submit, use an editor. 
Get somebody who knows where the comma goes, mm, where mm-hmm. the commas go. Sure. Get somebody who knows the punctuation, <laughs> the grammar, the syntax. And uh, if you have to, I don't know if anybody hand writes papers they submit to teachers anymore, but my students do. Mm-hmm. And I ask them on some assignments where they have to give me written work to write legibly. Sure. If your handwriting is not good, fix it. <laughs> sure. Fix it. You slow, can, slow down you, a little bit. You, yeah. don't, you don't have to. Well, we don't teach handwriting anymore. Sure. Uh, when I was in school, we had uh, grades on our report card for mm-hmm. handwriting. Sure. And my grade was always C. My handwriting was horrible. <laughs> but my grandfather's handwriting was beautiful. Uh-huh. It was masculine. It was readable. It, it, was, it was attractive. Uh-huh. And I went to him and I said, can you teach me to write the way you write? And he said, I don't know. Well, let's try. And we sat down and I drew the letters there the you way go. he did. And I practiced and I practiced and I worked on it. I have nice handwriting now. Mm-hmm. I can write sloppily, but I have nice <laughs> sure. handwriting now. And yeah. that, uh, that taught me that, yes, if you have handwriting you don't like, fix it. Mm-hmm. Don't live with it. Oh, my handwriting's bad. If you submit a paper that is attractive to the teacher, we're probably not supposed to. We're grading content, but we're affected. <laughs> sure. I am affected by, yeah. oh, I can read this. This is yeah. well done. This is well written. It, it, it conveys something. It does. It, it, it conveys a meaningfulness in, in a sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, another point, uh, how do you take tests? Grades uh, are often determined in a large percentage on how you do on quizzes and how you do on tests. Mm-hmm. When I was in the Navy, we had I had to go to s- different schools in the Navy. I went to cryptology school in the Navy because <laughs> I was in charge of all the secret codes. I had to have top secret clearance, and they gave me that. Sure. And I had to go to these schools. Well, when you go to these schools, you have to take tests. Mm-hmm. And the tests are usually objective tests, not essay tests. Yeah. And uh, I learned... Uh, some of the things to do uh, to take an objective test. True, false. Always answer the question. I mean, I have students who who skip, and they don't answer the question. If you're not sure if it's true or false, mark true. Because teachers, (laughs) uh, we get paid to stand up in front of people and tell them things that we believe is truth. Hmm. Our tendency is toward sure. true. We have to shake our heads and think a little bit before we write a statement that's false. <laughs> sure. And we tend not to do that that's a- funny. A- as much. If it's a multiple choices, choices, by the way, multiple choices, mm-hmm. uh, if there are four options, A, B, C, and D, one of them is probably going to be ridiculously wrong. Sure. Eliminate that one. Yeah. And then another one may be, uh, closer to being right, and the two, and there are two left. And gee, I don't know which one this is. That's right. Pick C. Mm-hmm. Always pick C. That choice, Charlie. Is I remember when did. when I was in school, our teachers would say, "When in doubt, C out," and that was oh really yeah okay. When uh, I remember being in grade school, and it was I, I at least on one occasion uh, we we use that phrase often, but at least on one occasion. We were taking a standardized test that was timed, and they told us if you run out of time and you have, you know, a bunch of questions left, just be sure before you turn in the the Scantron, be sure to just put C on all the remaining Choice questions. Charlie, all the way yeah. down, all the way down. When in, when in doubt, C out. <clears throat> exactly. <laughs> well, that's my hint, and I don't know that I have um, given you anything that's really. Um, helpful here. I hope I have. Sure. First of all, determine what kind of a learner you are. Yeah, let's summarize. I was going to say, yeah. I'm, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, determine what kind of a learner you are. Pick somebody to study with uh, in, and go to a place that is not distracting, uh, but study mm-hmm. with somebody else. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Keep going and go over it and over it until you get it. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, decide if you're studying to learn or studying for grades and maybe pick up a few of those hints that I gave to you about objective tests. Sure. Um, and, and that's what I have. That's yeah. what I do. Yeah. 
Let me let me add some thoughts to that too. I mean, please. I uh, uh, yeah, I've been an educator for coming up on a decade now, which is that's that's crazy. Um, but I've been obviously in school myself as a student for um, a long time, and uh, even until recently, I mean, I've got two master's degrees. Um, but what I would I'm say, bowing down. Thank you. Yes, yeah. as 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 required. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I knew that. What I'm thinking as I hear you say this, and as I even think of this question, um, you mentioned this at the top, but it's going to be rather individualized. The particular study methods that'll work for a certain person are going to usually depend a lot on that person's individual brain and workflow yes. and expectations and experience yes. and upbringing, like you name it. So they're really, I just to, I think to get ahead of this, the, the question being like, what are, if, if I'm reading the question correctly as what are just the best study tips that are out there, the, uh, there there's no silver bullets. There's no such right. thing as a one size fits all right. suggestion. Right. So you've, you well, spoke well on that in terms of like how different we have the term that we would use in education, we have different kinds of learners. Like you mentioned visual, tactile, et cetera. Um, Auditory. Yeah. Uh Auditory. I remember hearing in some of my education training in college. uh, I remember, I remember talking with some professors about the idea that that the, the, the groupings of types of learners uh, for for many people is often a misnomer, just simply in the sense that what we all benefit the most from is getting a little taste of each one of those. So we might be a yes. we might be a visual learner, absolutely true. That's our head top line headline, you know, to, way to define how we learn. But that person will still benefit from tactile and audible yes. augmentation yes, yes. with their visuality. Right. And so what, if, if we can get multimodal, what that es- essentially means, if you don't know what that means, is like... On, I know what that means. I'm saying to our audience. Oh. I'm, I'm, we're talking to an audience. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I forgot that. Yes. <laughs> I know you know what yeah. multimodal means. You're all out there. Yeah. Uh, if someone in the audience doesn't know what multimodal means, I'm just saying... Get some visual, get some audio, get some tactile. Yes. All together, working in tandem, that is actually, for most people, going to be the best way of learning. I think so. I agree with you. Right. I agree. Yeah. I have uh, one final tip sure. that I can think of, and I have a sign up posted in my classroom. Yeah. Study every day like the test is tomorrow. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I. It, People wait yes. until the last minute and then cram. Cram is not a good way to study. It's not a good way yeah. to even pass the test. Sure. Cramming is a really good way to um, to stuff your short-term memory with things. But that is very different than learning because yes, it, 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 it does not stick. That it, that's, that's the... I mean, that's the takeaway. Cramming is something you do in an emergency. Cramming is some, cram, cramming is a pulling a fire alarm in your educational journey. Right. That should not be a regular occurrence. It has to happen sometimes. I mean, just speaking practically. It does. I've, I've, it had, does. To, I've had to cram before. But cramming is not learning. Right. Uh, it's not. Retention is gone. Exactly. Yeah. Um, another tip that I just is thinking in the back of my head is to uh, be sure to reduce distractions. That's such a simple yes. piece of advice. But we, I, I, I can speak just even for myself. I don't want to say that anybody else is doing this, even though I know it's true. Like I, my phone distracts me. If I have work to do and if I'm trying to study whatever, my whole educational life going back to when I first got a cell phone, I am distracted uh-huh. by it. Right. Uh, it's sitting next to me. The screen is up, and um, I'll be studying for a couple of minutes, and then it'll ding. It'll 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 you know a notification will come in, and I'll oh, I'll grab it, and I'll see it, and okay, there's a couple minutes, and then I'll put it away, and okay, oh, gotta get back to work, you know. 
Well, I, some people yeah. are more susceptible to distraction than others. I have sure. students who, if anything at all happens in the room, sure. they're distracted and they turn toward it. I, I don't have that. I can concentrate. But, uh, of course, everybody can be distracted. I, everybody is susceptible to distraction yes. to an extent, if of course. You, if yeah. a person is di- being distracted more and more by the minute when they're studying, get up and walk around. Go get a bite to eat. Get something to drink. That's, that's huge. Uh, and, go outside. And go outside. <laughs> yes. Go outside and get cold. Go outside and get hot. Go mm-hmm. outside and, and just look around. Yeah. And then come back in. Let me ask you a question. Do you study well with music on in the background? No. Okay. I do. No. I do. I will turn it on unless it's something that um, – there's sometimes I wouldn't do that. Sure. Because it's too complex for me to learn that. But uh, I would um, – I do well Yeah, putting for, yeah. background music in. Yeah. For me personally, it's funny. We talked about background music on a like a recent episode too. Uh, for me with studying specifically and or like reading, uh, I need like silence. Right. My brain is actually, I, f- I feel like very poor at multitasking. I feel like I really silo and I go deep on one thing. That I'm that's in front of well, me. I do too. Experts yeah. have told me that there is no such thing as multitasking. You I just have two or three yeah. things happening at the same time, but you work on one uh, and yeah. jump between them back and forth. I yeah, I believe that's been my experience. Yes, I believe that. Okay, very good. Well, everybody There's... in the audience is up for all A's and retention of knowledge. Yeah, <laughs> there's so much more that we could say on this. I mean, we're both educators. We both have years of experience and. Uh, this could be a thing that comes back maybe in the future as we think of more, but uh, we should wrap it up and, and get to the okay. second segment Let's do. Um, here. This is the, uh, this is blindside Jim. This is the part of the show where we ask Jim a question that he doesn't see coming. It's always a fun question. It's always a question that is just meant to provoke um, Thinking and good conversation. Maybe oh, it a, provokes me. M- maybe a good story, <laughs> something like that. Um, anxiety. Anxiety. Yes. <laughs> every time I go, and this is this has been true. I don't know if you've noticed this. Every time I've uh, the last couple episodes say it's time to blindside Jim. Every time you like lean back in your chair uh-huh. and you like look at the ceiling and you kind of rub your eyes and you stretch like you're getting ready to. Like take a punch or something. Um, You're saying I have a tell. <laughs> you do. <laughs> yes. Um, all right, Jim. Time to blindside you. Here's the question for you today. Bring it. Um, besides the Bible, which is a great way to start any question. <laughs> besides the Bible, uh, tell me about a book, movie, or some other story that has left a lasting impression on you. And what about it has been so resonant? I have read so many books. I'm a compulsive reader. Tell me about some. Yeah, that's I, awesome. You know, I, I this is going to require just a moment for. Yeah, please. Uh, any book that has left an impression on me, um, Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life mm-hmm. has left an impression on me. Um, educational. Academic books I like to read. Uh, the linguistics of American Sign Language has sure. changed my thoughts in a lot of ways. Uh, books that uh, have to do with, oh, let's see, with personal relationships. Uh, I sort of enjoy those, but I think I've read enough of them, that, and they have helped me in, in some way just augment what the Bible says. If they are anti-biblical, in their approach, I usually close them and put them down and mm-hmm. don't want. So um, you, you mentioned movies. Uh, I don't look at a lot of movies. I sure. don't watch a lot of movies. Sure. Debbie, my wife, likes science fiction. I don't care for science fiction. Oh, uh, Jim, come on. Chick flicks, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, anybody who watches uh, three Hallmark movies knows what the ending is going to be That's when right. the thing starts. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy good acting. Yeah. I can recognize the acting. I like to laugh. And yeah. I, I enjoy comedy movies. Uh, I can tell. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Um, 
but I don't know what's impacted, what, what has influenced me. Sure. I, this is one I wish I had thought about. I keep a book log on the computer. Good for you. That's awesome. the books that I have read and where I, I summarize them a little bit. But I have to do that because I forgot if I read a book or not. Sure. And when I go to the library just for pleasure reading, uh, I do all that research on the computer first. Yeah. And then I go to the card catalog on, it's not card, what do you call it? The catalog the, uh, on, yeah. online <laughs> and see if the book is there. And I go, and when I walk into the library, I know what I'm You know what you're there for. I, what I'm there for. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I go to um, antiquated bookstores. There used to be more than there are now. Yes. But I would pull a book off the shelf and look at it. And uh, then I can go on my phone and go to antiquated book websites. There are such things. Yeah. And determine what the value is and see if this value is right. I do all of that. Um, I, I That's think fascinating. The, I, I'm not answering this well because I'm not quite sure. I've never surveyed in my mind sure. what has been influential and what has not. It's a good um, question then. <laughs> it, is, it is a good question. I don't know how entertaining the answer is. Um, <laughs> I just don't have yeah. an answer more than that. Yeah. Is there is there a story like like some like a fictional story that you like that maybe you grew up reading uh anything like that? Like for for I think some people today I wouldn't I don't I would hesitate to say most people. But like you know for me like I grew up and like CS Lewis the space trilogy that he wrote those are like some of the first books as a kid that I fell in love with, and those stories just are always going to be sentimental to me. C.S. Lewis's he wrote a book when his wife died. Yeah, I can't remember the a title grief of it. Observed is that grief, the name of it? Yeah, a grief uh, observed. I read that, and I read it um, not too long after my son died. Yeah, and when that that was helpful to me, mm. uh, he said things that I remember like. Um, I wanted a house full of people and no one talking to me. That line is in a, that line haunts me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that yeah. he was right for me too. Yeah. So C.S. Lewis has written uh, memorable stuff. Yes, he has. For me, for um, I have read so many books in trying to help me teach the Bible correctly. Mm. Commentaries. Now I don't go by the commentaries. Uh, they have to be in accordance with what the Bible says. Sure, but, sure. Um, for end times, when I had to teach eschatology, <laughs> and sure. all that, that's in, you know Daniel and Revelation and Second uh, Thessalonians, uh, all the books that touch on end times. crazy stuff. Yeah, it's very complicated, and there are four major positions on the chronology of eschatology uh, yeah. and uh, you have to kind of figure out where it's real messy and, and then, yeah uh, things to come by dwight pentecost is the best book i have ever seen hmm. on eschatology hmm. and so i recommended it to somebody yesterday wow uh, so there are certain books that stand out i have a library at home yeah and it's fairly extensive until my wife gets tired of <laughs> looking at all the books. Yeah. And so I have to put some in boxes every once in a while just to please her. But uh, I think that um, a person would end up remembering some books, but I've read so many and who have been that have influenced me. Sure. That I don't know that I can do a better job than this sure. stumbling around. It's all good. No. Yeah, okay. That's great. Uh, thanks for, as always, putting up with a blind uh, a blindside gym question. I usually like them. I didn't like this one. <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> sorry. I will. I will do better yeah. next time. No, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Maybe no. I'll do better next time. <laughs> sure, um, folks. That's going to wrap up another episode here of Brewing with Jim. We want to thank you, as always, for submitting your questions. Uh, for reaching out to us and uh, we would love to ask you to continue to do that if you want to yes. submit a question if you want to tell us your story introduce yourself just say hey thanks for the show whatever uh, please email us at brewing with gym at gmail.com that email address we look at uh, we every day you know, we get notification we don't like I don't open it and check every day but I get notifications if it gets uh, messaged 
we will see it yes, and we, we will. will reach out to you we'll respond we'll take your questions all that all that fun stuff so with that i think that wraps up another episode that's it take care everybody thank you very much have a good day Topics that are covered and the answers that are offered during episodes of Brewing with Jim are designed to mine the wisdom attained from a life of pastoral ministry and care. They do not constitute professional or clinical training or expertise in the areas of counseling or mental health. CBCS and its podcast network want to provide a platform for the discipleship of our community. Brewing with Jim is our attempt to foster that environment in a format that is accessible for everyone to participate in. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed during the show are the speaker's own, and they may or may not represent the views, thoughts, or opinions of Capistrano Valley Christian Schools or its faculty. The material and information presented here is for general information purposes only. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.